Hi everyone, it's Professor Permiton. In this video, we're going to talk about solving logarithmic equations. In the previous video, we talked about how to solve exponential equations with like bases. We also solved exponential equations using logarithms. In this video, we're going to talk about using the definition of a logarithm to solve logarithmic equations, how to use the 1 1 property of logarithms to solve logarithmic equations, and then we're also going to solve applied problems involving exponential and logarithmic equations. So logarithmic equations. A logarithmic equation is where you have the argument of a logarithmic function will actually contain the variable that you're trying to solve for. For some logarithmic equations, some algebraic manipulation of the equation is required to obtain the exact solution. And what is also important when you solve logarithmic equations is that there is a possibility of having extraneous solutions when solving logarithmic equations. What that means is that whenever you solve a logarithmic equation, you may have solutions that are not actually part of the domain of a logarithmic expression. So you need to actually determine the domain of each logarithmic expression that appears in the equation as well. To solve logarithmic equations where you have more than one logarithmic expression with the same base, you need to isolate the logarithmic expression on either side of the equation and then use the following one-to-one -one property of logarithmic functions. Let m, n, and a be positive real numbers, and a is not one because that's going to be the base on the logarithm. If log base a of m, so m is the argument of the logarithm, base a, is equal to log base a of n, and n is the argument of the logarithm, also log base a, then the arguments m must be equal to n if the bases of the logarithms are also the same. So let's look at example three. Example three, solving logarithmic equations. Solve each of the following logarithmic equations, round your answers to three decimal places if necessary, and also check for extraneous solutions. So number one, we're going to solve the equation log base 3 of the argument x squared plus 1 is equal to log base 3 of the argument x subtract 2 plus log base 3 of the argument x plus 3. So notice on the right side of the equation, you actually have a sum of logarithms, both base 3. So you can actually use the product rule for logarithms to condense this down or combine these two logarithms into a single logarithm on the right side of the equation. So you have log base 3 of x subtract 2 plus log base 3 of x plus 3. If there's a sum between them, you actually can multiply the arguments of the logarithms because they're both base 3 logarithms. So you have log base 3 of x squared plus 1 on the left side of the equation, but on the right side of the equation you have log base 3 of x minus 2 times x plus 3, the product of the arguments. And now we can simplify x minus 2 times x plus 3, use the FOIL method to multiply this out. So on the left side of the equation will be log base 3 of x squared plus 1 is equal to log base 3 of x squared plus x minus 6 on the right side of the equation. Well, you have logarithm base 3 on the left side of the equation, you have log base 3 on the right side of the equation, so you've isolated the logarithms on either side of the equation, and now the arguments must be equal to one another. So you have x squared plus 1 must equal the other argument, x squared plus x minus 6. And so if you try to isolate the x on one side of the equation, notice that the x squares will cancel out after you subtract x squared on both sides of the equation, and so then you'll have x minus 6 is equal to 1, or x equals 7. And now note, you actually need to find out, is x equals 7 in the domain of each logarithmic expression? So let's check out the first one. You have log base 3 of x squared plus 1. The domain of this function, the domain of y equals log base 3 of x squared plus 1, notice it doesn't matter what the x value is, the argument will always be a positive number. So the domain will be from negative infinity to infinity, or the set of all real numbers for this first expression. The domain for the second expression, you have log base 3 of x minus 2. Well, the domain would be 2 to infinity. Only x values that are greater than 2 will actually have that logarithmic function be defined. And then the third logarithm, you have log base 3 of x plus 3. The argument is x plus 3. That must be greater than 0 to be part of the domain of the logarithmic function. And so that means x must be greater than negative 3, or from negative 3 to infinity. So let's check. Is x equal 7 in the domain of each logarithmic expression? Yes, it is. So x equals 7 is the only solution to this logarithmic equation because x equals 7 is in the domain of each logarithmic function. All right, let's try number 2. This time you have natural log of x plus natural log of x plus 1. So x plus 1 is the argument of that logarithm, and it equals natural log of 20. So again, notice you have two logarithms, natural log of x and natural log of x plus 1, on the left side of the equation. Let's combine these because you have a sum. We can use the product rule for logarithms to combine them down into a single logarithm. So you have natural log of x plus natural log of x plus 1. That becomes natural log of x times x plus 1. So that means you have natural log of x times x, or x squared, plus x. So the argument of this natural logarithm is x squared plus x. And it equals the right side of the equation, natural log of 20. So you have the logarithms are of the same base on both sides of the equation because it's log base e for the natural logarithm. So that means the arguments must be equal to one another. So x squared plus x must equal to 20 because the 1, 1 property of logarithmic functions means x squared plus x minus 20 equals 0, or this can be factored. 
So you can actually find out what are the x values that will make this trinomial equal to zero. So find two numbers that multiply to negative 20, and the same two numbers need to add to give you one positive 1. So that would be positive 5 and negative 4. So x plus 5 is one of the factors, and x subtract 4 is the other factor. And this product of x plus 5 times x minus 4 must equal 0. So that means x plus 5 equals 0, or x minus 4 equals 0. And so that gives you x equals negative 5, or x equals 4. So let's check out. What is the domain of the logarithmic functions, natural log of x, and also natural log of x plus 1? Well, natural log of x. So x must be greater than 0 because x is the argument of this logarithmic function, natural log of x. And so x must be greater than 0. Well, you can't have an x value that's negative as a solution then. So x equals negative 5 is not actually a solution. It's what's called an extraneous solution because it's not part of the domain of each logarithmic expression in the equation that we're trying to solve. So x equals 4 is the only solution because it's actually part of the domain of each logarithmic expression. So x equals 4 means you only have one solution to this logarithmic equation. So if you have an equation that you can use the 1 1 property, you can actually set the arguments equal to one another and then solve the resulting equation. However, if you want to solve logarithmic equations involving logarithmic expressions and a constant term, we're going to need to use the following algebraic techniques. So guidelines for solving logarithmic equations. Number one, determine the domain of each logarithmic expression in the equation. Number two, isolate the logarithmic term on one side of the equation. You may need to first combine any logarithmic terms of the same base on one side of the equation using the product rule or the quotient rule of logarithms. Number three, write the equation in exponential form by raising the base of the logarithmic expression to each side of the equation. And then number four, solve the resulting equation for the unknown variable. So in example four, we're going to solve logarithmic equations where we actually have to use the algebraic technique that, that was just described. So example four, solving logarithmic equations. Solve each of the following logarithmic equations. Round your answers to three decimal places, if necessary, and check for extraneous solutions. So number one, we're going to solve the logarithmic equation log base 10, because it's the common logarithm, where the argument is 3x plus 5, and the right side of the equation isn't a logarithm. If the right side of the equation is just a constant term, 2. And so you have a logarithm on one side of the equation, but you have a constant term on the other side of the equation. So you can rewrite this from logarithmic form into an equivalent exponential form. So notice that the base of this logarithm is base 10. So if you take base 10 raised to the exponent 2, then it must equal the argument. So 10 squared equals 3x plus 5. So this is an equation that involves exponential expressions now, and it's an equivalent form as a logarithmic form. And so 10 squared equals 3x plus 5. Now we can solve this resulting equation. 10 squared is 100, so 100 equals 3x plus 5. And if you isolate the x on one side of the equation, subtract 5 to the left side of the equation to get 3x equals 95. And then divide both sides by 3. x is turned out to be 95 divided by 3, or approximately 31.667 when you round in three decimal places. And now we want to check. Is this actually an extraneous solution, or is it actually a true solution? Let's check out the domain. The domain of this logarithmic expression is y equals log base 10 of 3x plus 5. Well, the argument 3x plus 5 must be greater than 0, which means if you solve for x, you'll get 3x is greater than negative 5, or x is greater than negative 5 thirds. So the domain of this logarithmic expression is parentheses negative 5 thirds to infinity. Well, let's check our solution. We had x is equal to about 31.667. It is in the domain of this logarithmic function, and so that means you do have one solution. It's not an extraneous solution. It's actually a solution to the equation because it's actually part of the logarithmic function's domain. Okay, number two. This time we're going to solve the logarithmic equation log base 3 of the quantity x plus 15. Subtract log base 3 of the quantity x subtract 1 is equal to 2. So notice you have two logarithms on the same side of the equation, and there's a subtraction between them. That means we can use the quotient rule for logarithms this time, and so you can combine the arguments using division. So log base 3 of x plus 15 subtract log base 3 of x minus 1 equals 2. The left side of the equation becomes log base 3 of the quantity. The first argument was x plus 15 before the subtraction sign, so that's the numerator. And then the argument of the logarithm after the subtraction sign is x minus 1, that's in the denominator. So you have log base 3 of x plus 15 divided by x minus 1, and the right side of the equation is the constant term, just 2. And so again, we have a logarithm on one side of the equation, and the right side of the equation is just a constant, or just a number, 2. Well, this is logarithmic form. Let's convert this to an equivalent exponential form so we can solve the resulting equation. So you have base 3 for this logarithmic expression on the left side of the equation. That means base 3 raised to the second exponent, or 3 squared, will equal the argument. So 3 squared equals x plus 15 divided by x minus 1. 
And now we can solve this equation because x plus 15 divided by x minus 1 is equal to 3 squared is 9. So let's get rid of the denominator by multiplying both sides of the equation by the least common denominator, which is x subtract 1. So x plus 15 is equal to 9 times the LCD, x minus 1 in parentheses. And so distribute the 9 through the parentheses, you'll get x plus 15 is equal to 9x minus 9. And now you can solve for the x. Isolate x on one side of the equation. So let's subtract 9x to the left side of the equation. That'll make it negative 8x plus 15 equals negative 9. And now subtract 15 to the right side of the equation. Negative 8x is equal to negative 24. And so you get x equals positive 3. So again, we need to check out what is the domain of each logarithmic function that appeared in the original equation. You have log base 3 of x plus 15. With the domain of this function, the domain of y equals log base 3 of x plus 15 is all x values greater than negative 15, or from negative 15 to infinity, both with parentheses. And then you also have log base 3 of x minus 1. The domain of y equals log base 3 of x minus 1 is x values that are greater than 1. So 1 to infinity, both with parentheses. And so we need to check, is x equals 3 in the domain of each logarithmic function? Yes, 3 is greater than negative 15, and yes, 3 is greater than 1. And so 3 is the only solution to this logarithmic equation. Number 3. This time we're going to solve the logarithmic equation natural log of x minus 1 plus natural log of x plus 2 on the right side of the equation is 1. So again, notice you have two logarithms on the left side of the equation, but this time there's a sum between the logarithms. So we're going to use the product rule for logarithms to combine those two logarithms into a single logarithm, and it will equal 1 on the right side of the equation. So natural log of x minus 1 plus natural log of x plus 2 is equal to 1. The left side of the equation becomes natural log, a single logarithm, where you multiply the arguments because we're using the product rule because there's a sum between the logarithms. So you have x minus 1 times x plus 2. That's the argument of the natural logarithm. So natural log of x squared plus x minus 2 after you use the FOIL method. So that's on the left side of the equation, and the right side of the equation is 1. So you have a logarithm is equal to a constant term 1 on the other side of the equation. So this, again, is logarithmic form. Let's convert to an equivalent exponential form. So this is natural logarithm. So this is a log base e logarithm. So you have e to the first power is equal to the argument x squared plus x subtract 2. So this becomes the quadratic equation where you can move all the terms on one side of the equation so the equation is equal to 0. So you have x squared plus x subtract 2 and then subtract e and they will equal 0. So let's solve this using the quadratic formula. That means that the coefficient a is 1, the coefficient b is positive 1, and the coefficient c is the constant term negative 2 subtract e. So let's substitute these values into the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is x equals opposite of b plus or minus square root b squared subtract 4ac inside the square root, and it's all divided by 2a. If you substitute in the values a equals 1, b equals 1, and c equals negative 2 subtract e, you'll get this. Negative 1 plus or minus b squared becomes 1 squared subtract 4 times a, so 4 times 1, times c, which is negative 2 subtract e, so that's all inside the square root, and it's divided by 2 times a, and that's 2 times 1. And so if you simplify inside the square root, you'll find out it's negative 1 plus or minus square root of 19.87313, and then the denominator is 2. So if you simplify this, you'll actually have two different solutions. You'll have x is about 1.72896, or x is about negative 2.72896. So again, we need to actually check what is the domain of each logarithmic expression that shows up in the equation. Well, we had natural log of x minus 1, the domain of this function, y equals natural log of x minus 1, is all x values greater than 1, or from 1 to infinity, both with parentheses. The other logarithm function that shows up was natural log of x plus 2. Well, the domain of this function, y equals natural log of x plus 2, is all x values greater than negative 2, or from negative 2 to infinity, both with parentheses. So let's check which of these x values will actually be in the domain of both logarithmic functions. Well, 1.72896 for the x value, that will actually be a solution because it's in the domain of each function. It's greater than 1, and it's also greater than negative 2. However, if x is negative 2.72896, that is not in the domain of the natural log of x minus 1, so you'll have natural log of a negative value, which does not exist. So negative 2.72896 for an x value, that is not a solution. That's called an extraneous solution. So we only have one solution to this logarithmic equation, it's x is about 1.72896. So let's try a couple more. Number four, we have log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of x attract 3, and the right side of the equation is 2. So again, we have two logarithms on the left side of the equation, and the two logarithms are being added to one another. That's the product rule for logarithms. We can, can take these two logarithms and condense them down or combine them into one logarithm where you actually multiply the arguments. So you have log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of x minus 3. That becomes log base 2 of x 
times x minus 3, where you multiply the arguments. And so that will be log base 2 of x squared, subtract 3x. And the right side of the equation will stay 2. And so this is logarithmic form. And so now you can actually can change this to exponential form. So you'll have base 2 for the logarithmic expression. So base 2 raised to the second exponent, so 2 squared, is equal to the argument x squared subtract 3x. And so now you can solve this resulting equation. Because it's a quadratic equation, well, let's try factoring first. You have x squared subtract 3x. And if you subtract the 4 to the right side of the equation, you'll have minus 4 and it equals 0. And so this does factor. Two numbers that multiply to negative 4, and the same two numbers need to add to negative 3, negative 4, and positive 1. So one of the factors is x minus 4, the other factor is x plus 1, and when you multiply these two factors together, the right side of the equation is 0. And so that means x minus 4 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0, and so x equals negative 1, or x equals positive 4. And so again, make sure that you check the domain of each logarithmic expression that shows up in the equation. You have log base 2 of x, the domain of this y equals log base 2 of x is x values greater than 0 because the argument is just x. And so the domain is 0 to infinity, both with parentheses. And now you also have a log base 2 of x subtract 3. The domain of y equals log base 2 of x minus 3 are all x values greater than 3, or 3 to infinity, both with parentheses. Is x equals negative 1 in the domain of each logarithmic function? Well, no. It has to be greater than 0 and also greater than 3. So an x value must be greater than 3 to be part of the domain of each logarithmic function. Well, x equals negative 1 is not in the domain of y equals log base 2 of x. So x equals negative 1 is an extraneous solution. However, x equals 4 is greater than 0 and also greater than 3. So x equals 4 is the only solution to this logarithmic equation. Number 5. We have 6 subtract log base 2 of the argument x squared subtract x subtract 2, and the right side of the equation is 4. Notice that you need to isolate the logarithmic expression first. You have 6 that can be subtracted to the right side of the equation, and so you'll have negative log base 2 of x squared subtract x subtract 2 is equal to 4 subtract 6 will give you negative 2 on the other side of the equation, away from the logarithm. And now, you don't have logarithm, you have the opposite of log base 2 of x squared minus x minus 2. So let's divide both sides of the equation by negative 1, so that way we can get just logarithm base 2 on one side of the equation. So that will be log base 2 of x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to negative 2 divided by negative 1 will make it positive 2 on the right side of the equation. And so this again is a logarithm on one side of the equation and a constant term on the right side of the equation. This is in logarithmic form. We can convert to an exponential form that's equivalent and then we can solve that equation. So we have log base 2, so this is base 2 raised to the exponent 2, so 2 squared on the one side of the equation, is equal to the argument x squared subtract x subtract 2. Now this is an exponential form, and so we can solve this resulting equation. We have x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 4 on the other side of the equation, and now let's move all the terms to one side of the equation and see if it factors. You have x squared subtract x subtract 6 after you subtract 4 to the left side of the equation, and the right side of the equation is 0. So since this is a trinomial, find two numbers that multiply to negative 6, and the same two numbers need to add to negative 1. Well, the two numbers that work are negative 3 and positive 2. So the factors are x subtract 3 in one set of parentheses, and the other factor is x plus 2 in the other set of parentheses. And when you multiply these two factors, the right side of the equation is 0. So that means one of the factors is 0. So x minus 3 equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0. x equals positive 3, or x equals negative 2. So again, let's check out what is the domain of the logarithmic function that shows up in the equation. We had log base 2 of x squared subtract x subtract 2. You can actually simplify this logarithmic expression because you have log base 2 of x squared minus x minus 2. That does factor. That trinomial in the argument of the logarithm does factor. Two numbers are multiplied to negative 2 and also add to negative 1. It's x subtract 2 and x plus 1. So log base 2 of x minus 2 times x plus 1 simplifies because you have a product of two different factors in the argument of the logarithm. So this can be simplified using the product law. You have log base 2 of one of the factors, x minus 2, plus log base 2 of the other factor, x plus 1. And so now we can find out the domain of each of these logarithmic functions. Log base 2 of x minus 2, the x values must be greater than 2. So the domain of y equals log base 2 of x minus 2 is 2 to infinity, both with parentheses. And then the domain of log base 2 of x plus 1 the domain of this function, y equals log base 2 of x plus 1, must be x values greater than negative 1, or negative 1 to infinity, both with parentheses. So let's check. Is x equals 3 greater than 2 and also greater than negative 1? Yes. So x equals 3 is a solution. Is x equals negative 2 greater than 2? No. So x equals negative 2 is not a solution to this logarithmic equation. It's an extraneous solution. So x equals 3 is the only solution to this equation that involves logarithms. 
Now that we know how to solve exponential and logarithmic equations, we can actually use the algebraic techniques to solve a variety of application problems involving exponential and logarithmic functions. So example five, we're gonna talk about compound interest problem again. Suppose that you invest $6,500 into a certificate of deposit or CD with an annual interest rate of 6.5% and the interest rate is compounded continuously. If you would like to use this account to invest in a purchase of a new car, when will the account balance reach $9,000? And so since we're talking about continuous compound interest, we're gonna use the continuous compound interest formula, which was this. A of t is equal to principal p times base e raised to the exponent r times t, where r is the interest rate and t is in years. So A of t, that's the account balance or the accumulated amount. We want the account to accumulate up to $9,000. So you have $9,000, that's the A of t. The principal was P, that is the amount that you deposit into the certificate of deposit or CD at $6,500. And then the interest rate is R, that was 6.5%, or as a decimal, that'd be 0.065. So if you substitute this information to the continuous compound interest formula, you'll have this. A is equal to P times base E to the RT exponent, where the A is replaced with 9,000, that's the accumulated amount, is equal to the P, the principal, is $6,500 times base e raised to the exponent r, r as a decimal is 0 0.065, and then t, t is in years. Well, notice that t is what we're trying to find, and it's in the exponent of base e. So we're gonna use logarithms to solve this exponential equation. So first, isolate the exponential expression on one side of the equation. So you need to divide both sides by 6,500 to isolate base e raised to the exponent 0 0.065 times t. So e to that exponent, 0.065t, is equal to 9,000 divided by 6,500, which will simplify to 18 thirteenths. So again, do not put this into a calculator until the very end. You want to avoid round off error. So we'll keep it as 18 thirteenths. So on the left side of the equation, you have base e to the 0.065 times t. We want to be able to bring this exponent down, but we can only do that with logarithm properties. So let's take the natural log on both sides of the equation, take natural log of base e to the 0.065 times t, and take natural log on the right side of the equation as well. So you have natural log of 18 thirteenths. And so now you can use the power law for logarithms. You can bring the exponent down to make it a coefficient of the logarithm. So you have 0.065t times natural log of the base e. e is still part of the argument of that logarithm. And the right side of the equation would stay natural log of 18 thirteenths. And so now we know natural log of e, that's just one, because that's log base e of e, and base e raised to the first power gives you e back. And so natural log of e is just one. So you have 0 0.065 times t times one is equal to natural log of 18 thirteenths. And so if you want to get t by itself, you can divide both sides of the equation by 0 0.065. And so t is natural log of 18 thirteenths divided by 0 0.065, if you put this into a scientific or graphing calculator, you'll find out it's approximately 5.006, and t is in years, so about five years. So it'll take about five years for the $6,500 to accumulate to $9,000 with a 6.5% interest rate that is compounded continuously. So this finishes our video on solving logarithmic equations. We use the definition of logarithm to solve logarithmic equations, and we also use the one-to-one -one property for logarithms to solve logarithmic equations, and then we also talked about how to solve applied problems involving exponential and logarithmic equations. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know, or if you have any questions while we work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well, and I'll see you at the next video when we talk about modeling with exponential functions.